Welcome to Bhavika's Chat Show. This is your host Bhavika Kochar. I speak to interesting personalities from different domains like customer success, product management, entrepreneurship and much more. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of Bhavika's Chat Show. Today we have a very special guest and he is none other than Ankit Kaushik who is a co-founder uh, at Picker uh, and uh, they are D2C brand enablers. So hey Ankit How are you? Welcome to the show. Hi Bhavika, I'm doing good. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for asking and thank you so much for accepting this invite. It's a pleasure to host you and I'm very sure that uh, the audience is going to love uh, the interaction as well. Sure, looking forward to the conversation here. Great, great. So today uh, Ankit, I know uh, you will be uh, taking us through some essential skills which are required to build a D2C brand, right? So uh i'll give you some time to uh, to actually take us through your experience your journey uh, what were the challenges that you faced what do you feel like is very important in building such a brand yep uh, so uh, picker was started back in 2015 when there was not much of the d2c influence it was a e-commerce market back then and uh, we kind of started with the vision of helping these d2c brands and enabling the logistics particularly we started back then uh, with this vision and right now we are helping these brands uh, in not just in logistics but in other modes as well like in helping them in terms of marketing or in terms of communication with the right audience and uh, helping them out reducing their costs uh, of uh, let's suppose packaging or even other helping them in warehousing and fulfillment and these kind of services so it has been a tremendously uh, adventurous journey for us and uh, we uh, i particularly have enjoyed it very well uh, so it was started by uh, three of us uh, uh, myself uh, then my co-founders are uh, ritman and gorav okay. uh, who handle the tech in the marketing teams as well yeah okay yeah i can i can see the journey of the brand of course it's it's been great and congratulations to all of you guys out there who are putting in day in and day out to make this a success um, personally yeah. i love picker too uh, let me tell you because i shop a lot and whenever i whenever i of course buy something the final landing page actually takes me to picker and i can see all my details the tracking and everything so i also uh, i'm a great fan of picker so thank you so much for uh, taking us through that um okay yeah. so let's go ahead with uh, the next round which is called the rapid fire round it'll be rapid uh, but i'm really sorry that i do not have any hampers to give it to you uh, after pandemic or after covid if i happen to visit the office you you will get that for sure so um uh, let's start with the rapid fire round uh, the first question in the round is um uh, how should you start building trust uh, when you start building your brand any any best practices around that so uh, the best practice would be like uh, strengthening your social media presence how okay. your reviews and testimonials are flowing in into your website what are the different success stories of the audiences that you have captured and sold your products or like they have used your services or things like that so this gives the first hand experience to the upcoming buyers and uh, people who are looking at your website or who right. have heard your name so they'll right. go out and search the right audience so the that particularly interests the next set of buyers in uh, helping you out and growing your brand so uh, okay. that is uh, the foremost thing that i would like to highlight got it got it and and when you mention ankit around social media specifically and these days like people are everywhere right linkedin facebook instagram um, personally what, what do you prefer like if you have to build a brand and if you have to recommend this to a to a budding entrepreneur uh which would be that one platform you feel like is uh, would be the best to 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 start building trust around customers so actually like all of these three platforms are particularly good it depends upon what your product is what product. your service like true so true. if you are uh, capturing a corporate market or people who are like let's suppose if you are a stationary brand or things like that so yeah. even instagram or linkedin might be a suitable uh, social media platform true. for you but yeah. it depends on what your exact product is how what is the right audience that you want to capture 
Correct. So correct. particularly that is dependent upon this. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead with the second question, yeah. um, uh, which is uh, actually you you covered it in the first question. My second question was pretty much uh, similar to what you mentioned, which is how do you think social media plays a role in building a D two C startup so i know you covered a couple of things around yes it, it helps in building trust but uh, some specific skills that a, a, an entrepreneur can have when he's leveraging social media uh, maybe in engagement views reach something uh, around that points like if you if you would like to highlight for the people out there okay it's it's actually a good strategy if you can somehow uh, get something like the viral products or things yeah. like that any any video or any marketing strategy that can yeah. push your brand and kind of uh, to the broader audience or mm -hmm. some clever tricks so that actually helps your brand in uh, becoming that that is one of the out of out of the box strategies that you can uh, that can help your brand so this is one of the things and like people are nowadays like there are many yeah. different channels to actually explore how to yeah. do social media marketing so yes. Yes. you can use one of the trusted resources and it would yeah. be better for them true true these days in the market we have great tools also around social media scheduling a lot of things you mm -hmm. can you can just put a post you can schedule it it'll go live on all the platforms so a couple of couple yes. of such things can be made use of by by these entrepreneurs exactly yes yeah. yes and 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 you were mentioning ankit please please go on so I was saying like uh, once your social media presence has been good and the orders start flowing in, then the role of picker actually comes in where you can, where we help okay. you in uh, reducing the turnaround times of you, of your products reaching the exact right audience. Right. So we can help out in reducing the cost in the delivery and the last mile and first mile part. We can True. help you out in the fulfillment and warehousing your products. So True. that's when the exact role of picker starts developing into your ecosystem. Cool. Firstly, cool. you have to build your brand, get the right products, get the right yeah. audience, and then yeah. we can help you in growing from X to 10X. Got it. Got it. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead with the third question. Uh, what do you think is more important? Is it the, the marketplaces or your own website? Because of course, uh, you you can promote your products, whatever you're building on the marketplaces like Amazon, Flipkart, or you can use your own website as well. What do you think uh, will play maybe a major role? Okay, so actually, uh, both of both the marketplaces and building your own brand should go side by side. Just okay. because marketplaces give you better visibility, True. they have the right audience yes. exactly placed. But in building your own brand, uh, you have to work from the scratch itself. So True. once you start on the marketplaces, you gain some traction, then you can build your own websites and brand and divert the audience over there. So this helps your brand in uh, kind of developing its own supply chain solutions and things like that. You don't need to be dependent upon these marketplaces, even if some other, other thing happens. So both these uh, marketplaces plus your own brands and websites should go like in parallel to each other. But you Sorry. should start particularly as my view is with the marketplaces first. Got it, got it. And and Ankit, if we have to like, if we talk about a, a simple person who's just trying to start this brand, uh, what could be a couple of things which he really needs to keep in mind, which you feel like that yes, that should be on the table. Maybe funding, maybe something else. What do you, what do you think that person should look onto as the must-haves to start a D two C brand? So, firstly, the must-have is a correct set of team. Right. So, like bringing in team members who have diversified skills. Let's okay. suppose one would be good, good in sourcing and manufacturing. The other would be good in marketing. Yeah. The other can be good in supply chain. So yeah. to a perfect set of three to four guys can actually, with their diversified skill sets, uh, build a good brand. And then right, finding the right audience and the correct uh, problem. Identifying the problem is also very important. You don't need to solve the problems that are already solved. It's better to find out the right, right set of problems and then start working on them. And then finding the right audience for that particular uh, product that you've developed. So these are two to three different critical factors that helps a brand in identifying itself, uh, okay. becoming a better brand among the masses. And uh, so there might be brands who can focus on a particular set of audience, but they can be brands who can who are open to all the masses. So this is a very critical thing that you want to, you should know from day one itself. 
Mm-hmm. No, I I agree with you there because uh, if you're building a brand and if you're building a product, it should solve a problem in the first place. If it's not yeah. solving a problem, um, it's not gonna work out for sure. So yeah, if we it add, might gain some initial traction, but it won't be true. True, and for that to happen, you need to do the right market research. You need to start from the beginning, look at your competitor yeah. insights. There's so many things that you'll have to do for for getting onto exactly. that. Correct. Exactly. Correct. great thank you ankit uh, moving ahead with the next question which is do you think personalization plays a role in the d2c branding kind of a thing because these days uh, when you're talking about the user base uh, things are if, if things are more personalized they they of course have better user experience better customer experience so what kind of role do you think personalization will play uh, in building this brand nowadays i keep uh, seeing brands coming up with personalized yeah. packaging Yes. So that is one of the yes. good things. Like, you don't need to actually, uh, you don't need to change the product itself, but the packaging yeah. can be as beautiful and personalized as, as it can be. Correct. So it gives a kind of a trusted uh, feedback uh, to the brand as well as a consignee, as well as a buyer who's actually uh, getting these products. So uh, it's good that brands are particularly focusing on areas where they can provide some personalized cards or letters, or you can say a thank you note. So Correct. this gives a Correct. Yeah, you can say a trust. Uh, this builds a trust among the end buyers that right. it is a brand is brand is kind of caring for them. So, correct, correct. Uh, yeah, definitely. Def- it 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 makes sense because at the end of the day, if it is personalized to your needs or maybe like you mentioned some notes from your name, I think that that creates that difference and you get that feeling that okay, I am also special for them. And when when yeah. you get that feeling as a user, you you. i uh, want to do more uh, of uh, interactions with them you want to transact more with them because you you build that trust with them so personalization other things can be like uh, depending upon your body type depending upon your skin type so if these are beauty brands they yes. can modify the yes. products and uh, cater them according to you so that sure. is another mode of personalization that can help a brand in getting the right audience and can be a good set for a- anybody and everybody depending upon their different uh, uh, parameters correct correct no i i i really i really agree with you there personalization is like changing the world these days and lot of tools lot of uh, products are also like building around personalization it's it's becoming a new market in itself so yeah i i i agree with you there and with this we are also at the end of our rapid fire round okay moving ahead with the next round which is the 3w's uh, wherein i ask um, uh, the three questions to all of my guests at my podcast uh, the first question is your favorite startup building book and why okay it's uh, particularly the lean startup by eric keys okay. so it's okay. a, it's a nice book that I, that actually helped us as a team okay. to oh, okay. uh, build picker in the initial days so it's nice. not about being wasteful it's about uh, it's not about being cheap it's about being like uh, less Lean. spending yes. less with the accurate amount of resources so right. that help that has actually helped a lot of companies in uh, being where they are right now and uh, that's a book that uh, i would want to highlight great great and on that point i think ankit it's all about what i would like to add to it is that it's all about being frugal because you can you can spend as much as you want but it's about spending the right amount to get the right investment out of it right right return out of it and uh, exactly. yeah roi matters like a roi matters yes yes great okay let's go ahead with the second question um what do you think the future of startups will look like in 2022 and of course you you must have heard there was there was so much of pomp and show around shark tank so many people have yeah. went on linkedin i am personally a fan of shark tank i've viewed every episode so uh, what do you think uh, how would startups look like and there were amazing startups that were there on the show as well so wh- yeah. what's your take there yeah so 2022 like starting from january itself has been a good year for startups we yes. have seen the rise of uh, some of the companies becoming unicorns and yeah. plus many of the startups are getting funding funded nowadays yes. so and as you said shark tank has kind yeah. of taken the startup journey to the masses itself yes. so yes. now people know what what is the right kind of uh, skill set required to build a brand so True. that that is kind of uh, they have interacted they have seen many many brands coming on shark tank and telling yes. the stories and how yes. they try to build the brands and what are the kind of different difficulties and things that a startup founder should have in his mind to before uh, you know launching his product True. so True. 
true. Let's see like how the year goes, but it it is yeah. definitely to be a good year for startups. Good. Correct, correct. And and Ankit, since of course you are also a co-founder at Picker, and you also must be meeting a lot of such budding entrepreneurs or maybe people who are interested into building business. So so how do you find like the vibe in the in youngsters these days? Because of course uh, you 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 could relate with the fact that yes, a lot of people around these days they feel like yes, we can build something, we can build something revolutionary for the people out there. How do you feel is the vibe uh, amongst the youngsters? The vibe is actually particularly good. Even in our company, like we have seen yeah. folks doing something, yeah. Yeah. and uh, many of the folks, like at least four to five people, have started their own brands itself. Wow! By Linda, okay. so Amazing. we are seeing it live over here, and definitely yeah. there might be many other folks uh, who are try- somewhere trying to identify the right set of products. Yes. So yes. the vibe is particularly very good. Yeah. True, true. It's just about I think, uh, 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 like having the right. mindset uh, keeping the patience and i think uh, they can make it if it if it if it solves a problem in the longer run so right. yeah the people who are building startups out there um, like hang on tight you are doing a great job we know that of course it it's frustrating sometimes it's overwhelming but at the end of the day uh, you're going to make it so just just keep working towards it great okay great uh, ankit so next question is that uh, one advice that you would like to give to anyone who is trying to build this uh, build build a d2c brand or build a startup one advice you feel like that you you cannot really be without right you you should definitely follow that advice what what would be that one advice you should you want to give okay so basically building a startup or a brand requires yeah. persistence there might be many failures coming on to your way uh, yes. there might be many smaller to bigger things that you might feel that uh, yeah is it right what i'm doing is it True. good uh, will the market accept this product so right. have faith develop your product be uh, build trust among your right uh, among the audience that you're selling to so these are the four to five factors that can definitely help you out in uh, scaling a brand from 0 to 10 and right. uh, persistence is the key like uh, definitely yeah. like we have been picker for seven years and uh, yeah. developing newer products every year year on year so that has helped us in uh, building a ecosystem of uh, things for that are useful for d2c sellers correct so similarly correct. any brand should have a persistence plus a correct set of teammates correct. so uh, that is required correct correct and ankit when you just mentioned about persistence one question that i had on top of my mind was that uh, during all these years when you were building picker was there any any particular scenario of course there would have been many but one scenario wherein you felt like that you felt like just giving up because as human beings we all feel like that right there are there are multiple feelings of self doubt overthinking lot of things come into the picture but one place where you felt like giving up but there there was another thing which saved you from giving up so if you can if you can give an example there will be lot of people out there who can get motivated so yeah that's the intention sure uh- so back in 2015 16 we raised our first uh, you can say angel round okay. and uh, that angel round our bank balance after around 6 months reduced to around 2 lakh rupees so that was one of the times okay. and the team size were approximately 40 odd guys so okay. that was one of the times that we thought that uh, what is happening and True. some of the faith was getting shaken so but yeah. then we recently realized that it's it's we can pivot and we can do Definitely. other things after yeah. Yeah. so then we started brainstorming and developed a new kind of uh, business mm-hmm. model for picker and uh, then from 2 lakh then the journey actually grew till here that we great, are great great exemplary and i can see the journey of course i'm i am really happy to see you guys growing and i really wish that picker uh, reaches new heights every day so thank you so much ankit uh, with this of course i know we've come to the end of the show but i was literally enjoying the conversation a lot and i did not want to let you go but i have to of course you're busy with so many things out there so thank you so much ankit for coming to the show once again i hope you also liked the conversation yes i really enjoyed the conversation it was particularly insightful and let's hope it might be helpful for other d2c brands as well true yeah. true yeah yeah thank you so much ankit take care bye 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 bye. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if yes, please spread the word. I would love to know your feedback. Hence, feel free to drop me a ping over LinkedIn. 
Stay tuned to many more interesting episodes. See you.